Right. Reaction now from CRTV host Deneen Borelli. We've got radio show host Ben Kissel and uh, my buddy Connell McShane. Connell, um, the, the, the Dr. Evil analogy notwithstanding, right. uh, the Chinese are, are apoplectic. And, and they're all but saying, you know what, forget about adding sanctions, mm -hmm. uh, tariffs of our own. Uh, we're quitting uh, these talks yeah. for the time being. Yeah, How bad a, is this? There have been a few important things said today. I think that was one of them, and that was the takeaway from the Chinese. The Kudlow comments as well, which you already picked up on, saying, hey, give us 24, 48 hours. We'll put together this right. coalition, coalition of the, the willing, willing yeah. which a lot of people would argue maybe that should have been the first move. Maybe even Larry Kudlow would have argued that to the president should have been the first move. Well, he move. didn't know about these latest ones, and that was the, That whole thing last night was so random, because if you think yeah. about it, the first 50 to $60 billion that were threatened against the Chinese, that took Lighthizer, the trade representative, Representative supposedly a long time to come up with painstaking process right. product by product 1300 products so for the president to add on the hundred billion you know that was just off the top of his head he sees that as a negotiating tactic he thinks that's the way you negotiate my question would be is that the way you negotiate with the Chinese sometimes that's a little bit of a different game than you know a real estate deal in New York or even a political deal here yeah what do you think Ben? well I think this is gonna hurt the people that Donald Trump promised to help it's going to affect farmers and it's also going to uh, affect uh, individuals lives in their living rooms if you look at what's going to happen with televisions over 40 percent of the TVs are brought over by China or from China rather uh, you know when you get upset that your that your team lost the Super Bowl and you destroy your television you have to go buy a new one it's going to be an extra 140 dollars and uh, you might want to watch the next episode of Roseanne. Go into effect. Right. Oh absolutely and that's so you don't what, think that cooler heads will prevail. Well it doesn't seem like they want to prevail uh, and also we have a situation where Donald Trump is out there trying to tout the tax cuts and you know telling people that they're going to have more money in their paycheck but meanwhile they're going to be paying more when they go to the store. What do you think, me? Well, this is certainly the war of the words. Uh, this is a proposal. Nothing has been put into place as yet. But futures uh, markets do trade on things that are going on right now. Yeah, and, and, All agricultural items from pork, cotton to wheat, to, uh, soybeans. And, and there are apparently a lot of categories of soybeans. Who knew? Yeah. They're all <laughs> down in price. So... Uh, that's happening in real time. It's and not waiting tariffs, for the tariffs. Some of the tariffs, by the way, just a quick point, have been put in place. The small, the three billion on each side. Which, well, that's exactly right. Which Jeff Flock talked about. It's yeah, reacting yeah. to what's going on in the news. Does that worry you? The administration doesn't. Maybe it does appreciate that. But does it worry me? What? I'm sorry. That does any of this worry you that we're going into <laughs> economic cats? It's. But it's not cat. Okay. Come on. I was just saying what you would say. Just like you have the the, the actual words there. Oh, you whoever. don't believe me? I don't. Okay. <laughs> fine. Oh, no, fine. You're right. But but, but getting back on point, um, no other president has taken on China. China has been gaming the system for many many years, and we are clearly on the losing end here. So something does need to be done. No one wants a trade war. Uh, absolutely not. But uh, the president is taking the stance. <clears throat> I think he's showing leadership in doing so by standing up to China to make them come to the table and do something. Well, you know, Ben, there is something to that right now. Who's your role model? It would be probably called Marx, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> I am I'm kidding. I'm just saying that under Republican Democratic predecessors, they've all tried various ways to get the Chinese to change their cheating ways. I think even you would acknowledge the Chinese well, do rig things. So what what's it, wrong with this president trying a different approach when it comes to intellectual property and obviously the theft of intellectual property I think that issue has to be addressed there's bipartisan concern for what the Chinese have been doing uh, regarding that issue but when you look at the the proof here the proof is in the pudding George W Bush tried to do sanctions it just simply uh, or uh, tariffs, tariffs rather yeah. it simply did not work so I, I just don't but see we never evidence. went and far enough because we we're so afraid of all the debt they held and that they the would screw us on that right? but we have the situation going on with North Korea we need China right now more than we have before, and I just don't think this is the right time for it. Yeah, I think there's a, uh, so I started to say earlier was like in dealing with the Chinese, I think it is a little bit different, and we may have talked about this the other day, but some of it to me is cultural in how you deal with the Chinese in a negotiation. So will this work for the president? It might, but he's used to making threats. Sometimes he's used to bluffing on purpose as right, part of a right. negotiation to get someone to come to the table. In Chinese culture, anybody who's ever done business there will tell you this, this whole concept of saving face is tremendously important to them. So if you're using insults, for example, if they feel like they're being slighted, for example, that doesn't necessarily help them come to the table. It makes them shut down. And by what they said last night, that's exactly what they're doing. That doesn't mean at some point they won't turn it around. But to me, that's what's happening right now. But this is a huge problem. And what you can't ignore a problem. You can't assume it's just going to go away. We're $375 billion U.S. trade deficit behind China. You mentioned intellectual property, which is huge. I don't know why we're not hearing more about that. Upwards of of 6 
$600 billion that the U.S. has lost because of uh, they've taken the trade secrets. For U.S. companies to do business in China, they have to pro provide their technology, their trade secrets. Right. What about the counterfeit products that the U.S. does as well? But I know we have a trade deficit with, with China. It's a big one. It's the biggest one. But we had a trade deficit with everybody. So, so where do we draw the line? And other countries well, have trade problems with China. So that's why right, this whole coalition right. of the willing thing might have made more sense. You know, they secretly, yeah, they different. secretly are the ones who are apparently telling Larry Kudlow to take him at face value. Hey, you, you have a beef here, right? Well, other countries have an uh, issue with China as well, and they are coming uh, to the table. Uh, when well, I haven't the seen them. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Larry Cudlow, WTO. <coughs> speaking of Larry Excuse Cudlow, me. let's just go back to Larry Cudlow a month ago, two months ago. He was totally against these tariffs. Uh, so now I suppose he's just doing uh, as he's told from Donald Trump. But if you also look at this, well, he also with, doesn't think they'll ever have to be necessary. They won't go into effect. If you look at the situation with Xi Jinping right. in China, he's going to be there for life. He's right. in the Constitution right. now. It's like playing a basketball game. One team has four quarters and the, the other team has 16 quarters. Yeah, he's not worried about the midterms. Exactly. Right. He's not worried about the midterms. The timing for this, I just don't understand. Here's what I worry about, that it gets out of hand on both sides because right. we've seen this. And most trade wars that start with a few goods, and this one now is over, I think someone was saying close to 3,000 different goods. Right. It's hard to dial that back. Well, there haven't been many, right? I mean, you really You're have to right. go back You're to right. the 30s. I mean, if right. you, and if you read about the whole Smoot-Hawley thing, it did start off. It was about the election, apparently, of 1928, which uh, Neil covered, as we know. That was it's a little a, hurtful. Mainly <laughs> about yep. trying to protect farmers. Seriously, back then, they were trying to protect yeah. farmers. They had this whole big talk about it. By the time it was passed in 1930, it became much more than that. By the time, you know, the early 30s came around, <clears> other countries right. were responding to that. Some countries, including Canada, were electing. So you're afraid it's accelerating of beyond. Course. I mean, yeah. that's the concern. That's the concern. It's not yeah. about. Because on a numbers basis, right, there's much more benefit to this economy from the taxes we're cutting, like $800 billion coming into the economy this year from right. that, than the taxes we're hiking through tariffs or threatening to hike. But the, the concern is how long does this go on for and what does it turn into? Yeah. Do you think uh, that there's a silver lining in all of this? I was mentioning these prices and commodity prices that are tumbling, are largely agricultural items. And it might be short lived, Deneen, but the other take I had from a guest, I think yesterday, was well, for consumers, that means you're going to pay. Less for bacon, uh, less for uh, Italian sausage, the hot for type, itself. you know, yeah. So I, I, then these are the issues that matter to me. <laughs> and, 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 and that consumers might actually welcome this despite how it's hurting farmers. Now, a farmer pointed out to Jeff Locke, well, enjoy it while you can because it's going to put me out of business. But, but what do you think of that? Uh, well, and again, we don't know where this is going to end up. But you, you mentioned uh, how the market is responding. Of course, the market is responding to what's going on in the news. It's the headlines. Right. We have earnings seasons coming up. So, you know, maybe that will be another dynamic once that begins. But, but do you, know, you think the president foresaw the, the sell-off that this would cause? But any time the president says something, the market reacts, right? I understand so that, but I, I don't I think he saw category. this. I don't think, I, I don't. Not. It was kind of interesting what he said to our friends, Bernie and Sid, on the radio yeah. this morning, is that he did say, I guess obviously it's happened already, but he did say, well, hey, we might take a hit here, I acknowledging the fact that the markets could go down right. more in the short term. So but it would be short term. short term, and it would be long term good for us. Like